Praise the Lord and thank you for joining me. Um, we're going to do a great study here. There's a lot of heresy out there and this one is um, really, really bad. It's the incredible heresy of, quote, listen to no man. And I hear this a lot by what I would call lone rangers in Christendom. They're 99 plus percent of them are false. Uh, they won't take any uh, correction. They won't take any, uh, but mostly they won't take any teaching from another man. And you see this a lot specifically with women. Uh, you see some with men too, but women especially, they might have been hurt in their past or they might have had a bad relationship, a bad marriage or whatever it is, and their heart is hardened towards men, towards the male species, amen? And um, it's very sad. And they think that they are going to just waltz into heaven uh, without proper order in God's kingdom, not only here on earth, but of course in heaven. And that's not how it works. They're going to end up in hell. So uh, first of all, to Jesus be all the glory. Thank you for uh, watching this video. We do these in order to help people understand Jesus and also to repent of their false ways. Because if you have a false way, Galatians 1, 8, and 9 says you're accursed. If you bring any other gospel than the gospel that we're going to tell you right now, these are Bible verses, amen, then you are accursed. So let's get into the study, and we're going to show you why, quote, listen to no man is not true. Yes, the Holy Spirit will confirm teachings in you, amen, your conscience, your spirit, if it's holy, it will let you know if there is a potential problem with the teaching that you're uh, receiving, you know, and we know that uh, even the apostles warned, of course, throughout the Bible, uh, and uh, after Jesus has ascended, right, um, you know, warned uh, day and night with tears that there'll be people that uh, rise up, false prophets, and take even uh, the people that uh, are in, or, or that were in the churches back then, and it's happening more and more even today. Amen? So let's get into it. John 14, 24 to 26 says, He who does not love me does not keep my words. Very, very important. If you don't love Jesus, then you obviously don't keep his commandments. Amen. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. I have spoken these things unto you, being present with you. Okay. So Jesus taught, obviously, for the three years in his ministry while he was on earth between the ages of 30 and 33, before he went to the cross. Amen. Now he's saying, but the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. And we can see the beautiful Godhead there. Three and one, amen, who the Father will send in my name. So we say Jesus speaking, we see the Holy Spirit, and we see the Father. Three in one, amen. He shall teach you, and we say it says he, amen. He, Jesus isn't speaking to himself here, amen. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. We know that Jesus taught on earth, amen. So the Holy Spirit is going to confirm what Jesus taught them. They didn't understand a lot of it then, and now they're going to go back, and they're going to study, and the Holy Spirit will confirm that for them. Yes, whatever I have said to you, he says, that's to confirm the teachings of man. Praise the Lord. I'll try to keep what I'm saying up on top here. What the above verse is saying is the Holy Spirit will confirm all things needful to you to understand, uh, excuse me, in this particular uh, verses, it all things needed to the apostles to understand the apostolic office, especially things that they were not ready to hear until Jesus ascended. This is the proper work of the Holy Spirit to interpret, to confirm, to teach, etc., things necessary for salvation so that they, now who are they? The gifted ones to teach now. The teachers may teach others. Amen. Of course we have teachers, pastors, and elders, and deacons. All that stuff is biblical. All true Christians are to witness Christ. However, very few are to teach others. Now, we know that 99% of the people out there that say they were Jesus, including the, the wolves and the pulpits of most all the churches out there today, are antichrist. They don't preach and teach correctly. I understand that, but don't go in the ditch on the other side of the road and end up in hell with them. Amen. I'm not going to let anybody ever teach me. No, no, no. Of course not. We're going to get into some Bible. 1 John 2, 18 through 27. Let's read it real quick here. Little children, it is the last time, and ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now there are many Antichrists, many people against Christ, teaching the wrong doctrine. Amen. This was written 2,000 years ago. It's way worse now. Whereby we know that it is the last time. We know the last days 
have been for 2,000 years. Amen? They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is, and see, the ecumenical say, oh, well, you understand this better than me, and I understand that. You know, we disagree on this doctrine, we disagree on that doctrine, but we're going to still make it into the same heaven. Oh, no, 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 that's not how it works. Amen? Did you hear this? Did you hear this? Let's back that up again. You have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you don't know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. I started this study with Galatians 1, verses 8 and 9. It says, If anybody brings any other gospel other than the one that we preach to you, let them be accursed. You are not to be ecumenical. Baptists, Catholics, Mormons, Pentecostals, Lutherans, Anglicans, Jehovah Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists. I could go on and on and on. The 20,000 plus denominations are all going to hell. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. And if you don't have it uh, the right way, you can't bring false doctrine. Amen. And this is the problem with these antichrists that are lone rangers that have no order, that don't have anybody that ever taught them. Praise the Lord. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. You have a lot of oneness Pentecostals and people that believe that Jesus is the Father and Jesus is also the Holy Spirit. It's Antichrist. They deny the Father and the Son if they deny any of the three-person Godhead. Whoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. But he that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. I can clearly see it speaking of two people there. Amen. That's just an aside, by the way. Let they therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. Now, did you hear that? If that which you have heard, the true gospel from when we first te- uh, taught you, from the beginning shall remain in you. See, you must remain faithful. You must remain in the Word, in in Jesus, amen? You also shall continue in the Son and the Father. Now just change that up. If you did not remain in the original doctrine that was preached to you, then you're not going to continue in Jesus and in the Father, period, and you won't have eternal life. Let's go on to verse 25. And this is the promise that he has promised us even eternal life. There's the answer. These things have I written to you concerning them that seduce you. And there's a lot of seducers out there, including these um, people that believe that no man can ever teach another man. That's just ludicrous. It's sinful. But the anointing which you have re- wait a minute. The anointing which you have received of him abides in you. And you need not that now listen, you need not that any man teach you. But listen, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things as is the truth and is no lie and even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Now listen very, very closly. This does not exclude our need of being taught by them who partake of the same anointing. We're going to go through some verses below that say don't be many teachers because you have a greater condemnation. So wait, there's either teachers or there's not. So don't be many teachers. I agree with that. That's Bible. There shouldn't be many teachers out there. Amen? Okay, a good servant of Jesus Christ. Let's read what a good servant of Jesus Christ does. If thou put the brother in a remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' table, uh, fables, excuse me, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little. That doesn't mean we become fat slobs. Amen. That's sinful. But in terms of eternity and spirituality, you could have the best. You know, you could be in the gym three days a week. Uh, th- uh, excuse me, three hours a day, which is sinful in itself, right? You know, spending hours and hours a day in the gym. You shouldn't be going to the gym because it's immodest. Another story for another day, amen. But bodily exercise, profit a little. That doesn't mean you don't take care of your body, amen. That's a temple of the Holy Spirit now. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of acceptation. Now listen very closely. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach. 
because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, specifically of those that believe. Listen to the command. These things command and teach. Who are they talking to? Not the Holy Spirit. They're talking to true Christians on earth. These things command and teach. Let no man, and speaking to a young person, let no man despise thy youth, but be an example of the believers in word and conversation and charity and spirit and faith and purity. Till I come, listen closely, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Now listen very, very, very closely. Who are Christians commanded not to listen to? I didn't put it here, but if you want to pause this or go back to it, read... Uh, <laughs> I put the wrong number there. It should say, read 2 Peter chapter 2. Amen? I have to fix that. Read 2 Peter. There's not one end. <laughs> read 2 Peter chapter 2 and the book of Jude. Just to start, That those two chapters will give you a great idea of the false uh, teachers, preachers, whatever you want to say, that have come into this world and that are here everywhere now. Amen? Psalm 146, 3 says, now listen. When it says, when I'm reading these verses now, this is talking about fleshly men, ungodly men. You don't want to be taught by ungodly men. Of course not. So don't rest these scriptures and say, oh no, see it says don't trust in any man. No, no, listen closely. Psalm 146, 3. I just pulled out a few that these heretics try to use and they rest these scriptures to their destruction. Amen. It says, put not your trust in princes. Of course not. To be a prince in this world, amen, or somebody in high places like a uh, well, I'm going to get to that in a minute. Nor the Son of Man, which means mortal man, not Jesus now, in whom there is no help. There's no salvation in princes. Amen? You're not going to get saved by Donald Trump or the Prince of England or anybody else. They're just mortal men. They're heathen. So you don't get taught by them. Of course not. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in men. Now listen. And make flesh his arm, and whose heart has departed from the Lord. Again, it says, don't trust someone that's heart is departed from the Lord. Not a righteous person. Psalm 118, 9 says, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Again, we know princes are, you know, men in high positions, whether politically, financially, or otherwise. They're generally proud, vainglorious, self-confident, and rash. It's better to trust in God than in these heathen, in these men. Is it starting to hit you now? I'm going to get to the ones where it talks about Christian teachers. Isaiah 2.22 says, See, see from ungodly man, whose breath is in his nostrils. See, who's, that means who trusts not in God. For wherein is he to be accounted of? Of course you don't trust in those people, which is the majority, vast majority of the world. The Bible says in James 4, oh, I'm going to get to that. <laughs> I'm jumping. Uh, I didn't even see that. I'm jumping ahead in my mind here. Luke 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourself before men, but God knows your hearts. Those people which are highly esteemed by men is an abomination in the sight of God. Sports people, abomination to God. You know, people that play sports in these, uh, well, even, uh, you know, college and pro and even high school, all this. It's just an abomination. Amen. You adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship of the world is enmity with God. Therefore, if you are a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. Now, of course, if you're listening to worldly people, you're an enemy of God. You don't get spiritual guidance from a, from a worldly person. Egypt and Sodom clarification. I want to make this clear before we get into the Bible verses I want to uh, put in this teaching. Revelation 11.8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street, of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom. We know Rome is spiritually called Sodom. Amen. That's what we're looking at. And Egypt. Egypt had just such tyrannical cruelty. Where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues. And nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. And shall not suffer their dead bodies. Not allow their dead bodies to be put in graves. Okay. So the command is Isaiah 30 verse 1 through 3. Woe to the rebellious children. Did you hear that, saith the Lord? That take counsel, but not of me. You see that, speaking again of ungodly people, rebellious children, not taking godly counsel, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may, what? Add sin to sin. I mean, it's very clear who we should listen to. 
They walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadows of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. Shall the strength of man be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. I just, a few, oops, sorry guys. Just a few more here. I apologize. Um, Isaiah 31, 1 says, Woe unto those who go down to Egypt for help and rely on horses and trust in chariots because there are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they do not look to the Holy One of Israel nor seek the Lord. I can go on and on. I just put a few more here just so we can clarify this. I'm going to just do a few verses in the New Testament talking about how men are to teach others. Isaiah 31, 3 says, Now the Egyptians are not just men, but godless men and not of God. And their horses are flesh and not spirit. So the Lord will stretch out his hand and he will, uh, and he who helps will stumble and he who has helped will fall and all of them will come to an end together. You don't want to be there. Isaiah 33, 6, uh, 36, 6 says, Lo, thou trusted in the staff of the broken reed on Egypt. Wherefore, if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So, is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. Very, very clear. I pray you understood that. Now let's get into the New Testament that's going to confirm the Old Testament. And I wanted to pull out more things here that confirm that there, of course, are true teachers of the gospel. Again, there should be few, but let's get into this to conclude. Philippians 3.17 says, Brethren, be followers together of me. How much clearer could Paul be? The apostle says, be followers together of me and mark them which so as ye have us for an example. Followers together of me. Second Thessalonians 3, 9 says, not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Praise the Lord. Lone Rangers fall. Second Peter 2, 6, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, because they would condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto all that should live ungodly. So yes, there are people that we shouldn't listen to, but listen to Hebrews 13, 7 through 17. Remember them which have rule over you. Which have rule over you. This isn't kings and princes. This is pastors, elders, etc. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. There you go. There's your confirmation. Remember them which have rule over you. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Well, for the love of the Lord... That's a teacher whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Consider what they're saying and how they're acting and what they're doing and what they're teaching you. Listen, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Be not, and here's the warning why you need to listen to a wise teacher of Jesus Christ and his doctrine. It says right here, be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines. And that's what happens to people that are typically lone rangers. Amen. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them, that they have been occupied therein. We have an altar, we're off. They have no right to eat which serve at the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin and burned without, outside the camp, Wherefore, Je no, watch this. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the, outside the gate. Let us go therefore unto him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But do good and to communicate Forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. Listen again in verse 17. Obey them that have rule over you. Not only that now, and submit yourselves. How clearer can this be? Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. For they, who are they? The pastors and the elders, etc. In the church, in the local church. They watch 
Satisfy your souls. God put these people on earth to watch for your souls. And you people out there are saying, Oh no, the Holy Spirit teaches me everything. I don't need any man to teach me. You're a liar and you're going to go straight to hell. Let's continue. As they must give an account. These teachers must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Yes, listen to me. If you're still with me, I pray you are. I agree that 99% in quotes, the vast, vast, vast majority of teachers and preachers and whatever else out there are not of God. The Bible clarifies that. Few will enter heaven. Many will say to me on that day, but won't be able to enter. Amen? That doesn't discount the truths that are in the Bible, and you need to stop preaching, or whatever you call it, this heresy. You're leading people astray. Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Proverbs 27, 5 to 6, open rebuke is better than sequel love. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses, the worldly love of an enemy are deceitful. Them that are in sin rebuke before all that others may fear. I wanted to add those verses in there, not necessarily just talking about teaching uh, like a pastor does, etc. However, this does talk about correction and teaching, right? If I see somebody that's in sin, God forbid, who I consider a brother, for example, and I even if it's a little, or they're swerving off that narrow path a little bit and pressing their, you know, their 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 soul too much to the left or to the right, getting into that ditch or heading that way, I need to teach them. I need to rebuke them. Amen. That's another form of teaching. Of course, it's not as a pastor or whatever, but still, we must be loving. We must do the right thing. We must be in perfect godly order. 2 Corinthians 5.11, listen closely. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things which he has done in his body, according to that which he has done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest unto your consciences. 2 Timothy 4.2 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Titus 1.13 says, you know, this is what drives me just absolutely just, I, I just don't understand sometimes. A lot of these people that say, no, don't listen to any other man. Don't, and the reason I put those verses... They go out there and they'll, and they'll, quote, preach. They have no local church. They don't send people to a local church. They go out there and preach and they just go. No follow-up most of the time, no nothing. They don't have a godly uh, local church to send them to. Amen? So they're lone rangers, but they're going out there and trying to exhort people. Why should they listen to you? You don't listen to others. You don't get trained up in the way that you should be getting trained up and having oversight over you. Why should people listen to you? Think about that. A lot of these people that are in this ditch, they'll be on Facebook and they're teaching and preaching, so to speak. And a lot of them are women. It makes me really sick, but more importantly, it makes God sick. Titus 1.13 says, This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. The question is why? That they may be sound in the faith. Praise the Lord. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. King David knew what true repentance and obedience was and welcomes another man's smiting. He welcomes another man's teaching. He welcomes another man's correction. And this is where I wanted to conclude. Just a few more verses. If you don't have the spirit of King David who was in uh, times of his life in great and dire and grievous, filthy, dirty sin... Adultery, killed one of his own, I mean, just disgusting stuff. But listen to how repentant he was. 99% of the people won't even come close to this, and that's why they won't make heaven. Psalm 141.5, David says, let the righteous smite me. I'm going to give you a definition of that in a second. It means a smash in one's teeth. That's how powerful that word is. Let the righteous smite me, David says. Correct me. Teach me. Amen. And he says, it shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Did you hear that? 
which will not break my head, yet for my prayer also shall be in their calamities. What does smite mean? David just said, let the righteous, not the ungodly, not the not the false teachers, amen, let the righteous smite me. It means to strike down by implication to hammer, to stamp, to conquer, to disband, to beat down, to break down, to overcome, to smite with the hammer. That's how powerful that word is. Most people don't want to get smitten. Most people don't want the truth. And so they go off in their little corners and they say, nobody else can teach me but the Holy Spirit. And they don't have the Holy Spirit because they're too afraid. They're too afraid to come out of the sin that they're in. Amen. Now, with all that said, and we're going to conclude with just a couple more, three more verses, I believe, here. Very, very few people should be teachers. Yet we see all these people, uh, you know, on social media and even out, even on the streets and behind the public, that should not be teaching anything about Jesus because they have not the Holy Spirit themselves. Listen to James 3.1. My brethren, be not many masters. That means teachers. Be not many teachers. Knowing that we, teachers, pastors, elders, etc., shall receive the greater condemnation. Listen, many desire to be teachers that are not qualified. And woman, please don't try to teach online. You cannot assert authority over men. I don't care where it is. It doesn't say except for online. Oh, there wasn't computers back then. Oh, my Lord, have mercy. Come on. Matthew 23, 10 says, Neither be ye called many masters, many teachers, for one is your master, even Christ. Now, See, that's where they'll go off the rails too. See, it's just uh, neither be called teacher. See, you can't be called teacher or pastor, Jim. My Lord, have mercy. I can go into many more Bible verses to talk about pastors and all. It says, neither be called masters, for there is one your see that capital M master, even Christ. This verse does not contradict the above verse where it says, be not many teachers. You can't have it both ways. Amen. We just said, be not many teachers. So there's few teachers. Knowing that we, the teachers, the elders, the pastors, you right, shall receive the greater condemnation. You can't discount that Bible verse because of this one. So what does this verse mean? Don't be called mad. What does that mean? Don't be called teacher. This verse, again, does not contradict the above verse. The Bible does not have one lie or misconception or contradiction in it. Amen? It means don't uh, rabbi, father, and master were the titles of the Jewish leaders. So Jesus is now forbidding us to give or receive the title of rabbi, master, or father, to receive any such reverence thereof. Further, the word reverence is also a sin to use as only one is revered, which is Jesus. Listen closely, and then we'll finish with one more. He, Jesus, God, of course, sent redemption unto his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. If you have the word reverend in front of your name, you better take it off and you better repent. There is one revered reverend, and that is Jesus. Amen. And I'm going to finish with Hebrews 13, 24. Could have went a lot longer, but I think we got to the point, and I pray all those people out there that are Lone Rangers and uh, you know don't want to ever have anybody in order and to be uh, their shepherd. Oh, Jesus, is... you need to repent. Hebrews 13, 24. Salute all them. Who's them? Teachers, pastors, elders of the church that have rule over you. It repeats it again. Salute all them that have rule over you. And these are these rebellious people that don't want to be ruled by godly people. And all the saints, they of Italy salute you. And if you have a good ruler over you, they're going to help you not to swerve from the left and the right. They're going to care for you. They're going to lead you. They're gonna... That is the job of teachers. Amen. Thank you for listening. To Jesus be all the glory. I hope you watch uh, our upcoming videos. God bless the obedient. And I'm praying for the disobedient to understand that God has commands in the Bible that we must follow. Not some of them. Not the ones we like. And we trash the other ones. We throw out the other ones we don't like. Because Revelation 22, 18 and 19 says real quick. Verse 18 says, if you add anything to this book, to the Holy Bible, you're going to have all the curses added unto you. And if you take away, verse 19 says, you will have your name erased out of the book of life. Thanks for watching. Amen.